जय राधा माधव पुण्य And now chapter 10, The Pastimes of the Supreme Lord, Ramachandra. Shukdev Goswami said, The son of Maharaj Katvanga was Dirgabahu, and his son was the celebrated Maharaj Raghu. From Maharaj Raghu came Aja, and from Aja was born the great personality Maharaj Dasharath. Being prayed for by the demigods, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth Himself, directly appeared with his expansion and expansions of the expansion. Their holy names were Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatrugna. These celebrated incarnations thus appeared in four forms as the sons of Maharaj Dasharath. O King Parikshit, the transcendental activities of Lord Ramchandra have been described by great saintly persons who have seen the truth. Because you have heard again and again about Lord Ramchandra, the husband of Mother Sita, I shall describe these activities only in brief. Please listen. To keep the promise of his father intact, Lord Ramchandra immediately gave up the position of king and, accompanied by his wife, Mother Sita, wandered from one forest to another on his lotus feet which were so delicate that they were unable to bear even the touch of Sita's palms. The Lord was also accompanied by Hanuman, king of the monkeys, and by his own younger brother, Lord Lakshman, both of whom gave him relief from the fatigue of wandering in the forest. Having cut off the nose and ears of Shurpanaka, thus disfiguring her, the Lord was separated from Mother Sita, he therefore became angry, moving his eyebrows and thus brightening the ocean, who then allowed the Lord to construct a bridge to cross the ocean. Subsequently, the Lord entered the kingdom of Robin to kill him, like a fire devouring a forest. May that supreme Lord, Ramchandra, give us all protection. In the arena of the sacrifice performed by Vishvamitra, Lord Ramachandra, the king of Ayodhya, killed many demons, rakshasas, and uncivilized men who wandered at night in the mode of darkness. May Lord Ramchandra, who killed these demons in the presence of Lakshman, be kind enough to give us protection. O King, the pastimes of Lord Ramchandra were wonderful, like those of a baby elephant. In the assembly where Mother Sita was to choose her husband in the midst of the heroes of this world, he broke the bow belonging to Lord Shiva. This bow was so heavy that it was carried by three hundred men, but Lord Ramachandra bent and strung it and broke it in the middle, just as a baby elephant breaks a stick of sugar cane. Thus the Lord achieved the hand of Mother Sita, who was equally as endowed with transcendental qualities of form, beauty, behavior, age, and nature. Indeed, she was the goddess of fortune, who constantly rests on the chest of the Lord. While returning from Sita's home, after gaining her at the assembly of competitors, Lord Ramchandra met Parashuram. Although Parashuram was very proud, having rid the earth of the royal order twenty-one times, he was defeated by the Lord, who appeared to be a Kshatriya of the royal order. Carrying out the order of his father, who was bound by a promise to his wife, Lord Ramachandra left behind his kingdom, opulence, friends, well-wishers, residence, and everything else, just as a liberated soul gives up his life and went to the forest with Sita. 
While wandering in the forest, where he accepted a life of hardship, carrying his invincible bow and arrows in his hand, Lord Ramachandra deformed Ravan's sister, who was polluted with lusty desires, by cutting off her nose and ears. He also killed her 14,000 Rakshasa friends, headed by Kara, Trishira, and Dushan. O King Parikshit, when Robin, who had ten heads on his shoulders, heard about the beautiful and attractive features of Sita, his mind was agitated by lusty desires, and he went to kidnap her. To distract Lord Ramchandra from his ashram, Robin sent Maricha in the form of a golden deer, and when Lord Ramchandra saw that wonderful deer, he left his residence and followed it, and finally killed it with a sharp arrow, just as Lord Shiva killed Daksha. When Ramchandra entered the forest and Lakshman was also absent, the worst of the Rakshasas, Robin, kidnapped Sita Devi, the daughter of the king of Idea, just as a tiger seizes unprotected sheep when the shepherd is absent. Then Lord Ramachandra wandered in the forest with his brother Lakshman, as if very much distressed due to separation from his wife. Thus he showed by his personal example the condition of a person attached to women. Lord Ramachandra, whose lotus feet are worshipped by Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, had assumed the form of a human being. Thus he performed the funeral ceremony of Jatayu, who was killed by Ravan. The Lord then killed the demon named Kabanda, and after making friends with the monkey chiefs, killing Bali and arranging for the deliverance of Mother Sita, he went to the beach of the ocean. After reaching the beach, Lord Ramchandra fasted for three days, awaiting the arrival of the ocean personified. When the ocean did not come, the Lord exhibited his pastimes of anger, and simply by his glancing over the ocean, all the living entities within it, including the crocodiles and sharks, were agitated by fear. Then the personified ocean fearfully approached Lord Ramachandra, taking all paraphernalia to worship him. Falling at the Lord's lotus feet, the personified ocean spoke as follows. O oh, all-pervading Supreme Person, we are dull-minded and did not understand who you are, but now we understand that you are the Supreme Person, the Master of the entire universe, the unchanging and original Personality of Godhead. The demigods are infatuated with the mode of goodness, the prajapatis with the mode of passion, and the lord of ghosts with the mode of ignorance, but you are the master of all these qualities. My lord, you may use my water as you like. Indeed, you may cross it and go to the abode of Robin, who is the great source of disturbance and crying for the three worlds. He is the son of Vishrabha, but is condemned like urine. Please go kill him and thus regain your wife Sita Devi. O oh, great hero, although my water presents no impediment to your going to Lanka, please construct a bridge over it to spread your transcendental fame. Upon seeing this wonderfully uncommon deed of your lordship, all the great heroes and kings in the future will glorify you. After constructing a bridge over the ocean by throwing into the water the peaks of mountains whose trees and other vegetation had been shaken by the hands of great monkeys, Lord Ramachandra went to Lanka to release Sita Devi from the clutches of Robin. With the direction and help of the Bishan, Robin's brother, the Lord, along with the monkey soldiers headed by Sugriv, Nila, and Hanuman, entered Robin's kingdom, Lanka, which had previously been burnt by Hanuman. After entering Lanka, the monkey soldiers, led by chiefs like Sugriv, Nila, and Hanuman, occupied all the sporting houses, granaries, treasuries, palace doorways, city gates, assembly houses, palace frontages, and even the resting houses of the pigeons. 
when the city's crossroads, platforms, flags, and golden water pots on its domes were all destroyed, the entire city of Lanka appeared like a river disturbed by a herd of elephants. When Robin, the master of the Rakshasas, saw the disturbances created by the monkey soldiers, he called for Nikumba, Kumba, Dumraksha, Durmuka, Surantaka, Narantaka, and other Rakshasas, and also his son Indrajit. Thereafter he called for Prahasta, Atikaya, the Kampana, and finally Kumbakarna. Then he induced all his followers to fight against the enemies. Lord Ramachandra, surrounded by Lakshman and monkey soldiers like Sugriv, Hanuman, Gandamada, Nila, Angada, Jambavan, and Panasa, attacked the soldiers of the Rakshasas, who were fully equipped with various invincible weapons like swords, lances, bows, prasas, rishtis, shakti arrows, kadgas, and tomaras. Angada and the other commanders of the soldiers of Ramchandra faced the elephants, infantry, horses, and chariots of the enemy and hurled against them big trees, mountain peaks, clubs, and arrows. Thus the soldiers of Lord Ramchandra killed Robin's soldiers who had lost all good fortune because Robin had been condemned by the anger of Mother Sita. Thereafter, when Robin, the king of the Rakshasas, observed that his soldiers had been lost, he was extremely angry. Thus he mounted his airplane, which was decorated with flowers, and proceeded toward Lord Ramchandra, who sat on the effulgent chariot brought by Matali, the chariot driver of Indra. Then Robin struck Lord Ramchandra with sharp arrows. Lord Ramachandra said to Robin, you are the most abominable of the man-eaters. Indeed, you are like their stool. You resemble a dog, for as a dog steals edibles from the kitchen in the absence of the householder, in my absence you kidnap my wife Sita Devi. Therefore, as Yamaraj punishes sinful men, I shall also punish you. You are most abominable, sinful, and shameless. Today, therefore, I, whose attempt never fails, shall punish you. After thus rebuking Robin, Lord Ramchandra fixed an arrow to his bow, aimed at Robin, and released the arrow, which pierced Robin's heart like a thunderbolt. Upon seeing this, Robin's followers raised a tumultuous sound, crying, Alas! Alas! What has happened? What has happened? As Robin, vomiting blood from his ten mouths, fell from his airplane, just as a pious man falls to the earth from the heavenly planets when the results of his pious activities are exhausted. Thereafter, all the women whose husbands had fallen in the battle, headed by Mando Dari, the wife of Robin, came out of Lanka. Continuously crying, they approached the dead bodies of Robin and the other Rakshasas, striking their breasts in affliction because their husbands had been killed by the arrows of Lakshman. The women embraced their respective husbands and cried piteously in voices appealing to everyone. O oh my Lord, O oh Master, you epitomized trouble for others, and therefore you were called Robin. But now that you have been defeated, we also are defeated. For without you, the state of Lanka has been conquered by the enemy. To whom will it go for shelter? O oh greatly fortunate one, you came under the influence of lusty desires, and therefore you could not understand the influence of Mother Sita. Now, because of her curse, you have been reduced to this state, having been killed by Lord Ramachandra. See, because of you, the state of Lanka, and also we ourselves, now have no protector. By your deeds, you have made your body fit to be eaten by vultures, and your soul fit to go to hell. <laughs> Vibhishan, the pious brother of Robin and devotee of Lord Ramachandra, received approval from Lord Ramachandra, the king of Koshala. 
Then he performed the prescribed funeral ceremonies for his family members to save them from the path to hell. Thereafter, Lord Ramchandra found Sita Devi sitting in a small cottage beneath the tree named Shimshapa in a forest of Ashok trees. She was lean and thin, being aggrieved because of separation from him. Seeing his wife in that condition, Lord Ramchandra was very compassionate. When Ramchandra came before her, she was exceedingly happy to see her beloved, and her lotus-like mouth showed her joy. After giving the Bishan the power to rule the Rakshasa population of Lanka for the duration of one kalpa, Lord Ramchandra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, placed Sita Devi on an airplane decorated with flowers, and then he got on the plane himself. The period for his living in the forest having ended, the Lord returned to Ayodhya, accompanied by Hanuman, Sugriv, and his brother Lakshman. When Lord Ramchandra returned to his capital, Ayodhya, he was greeted on the road by the princely order who showered his body with beautiful, fragrant flowers, while great personalities like Lord Brahma and other demigods glorified the activities of the Lord in great jubilation. Upon reaching Ayodhya, Lord Ramachandra heard that in his absence his brother Bharat was eating barley cooked in the urine of a cow, covering his body with the bark of trees, wearing matted locks of hair, and lying on a mattress of kusha. The most merciful Lord very much lamented this. When Lord Bharat understood that Lord Ramachandra was returning to the capital, Ayodhya, he immediately took upon his own head Lord Ramachandra's wooden shoes and came out from his camp at Nandigram. Lord Bharat was accompanied by ministers, priests, and other respectable citizens, by professional musicians vibrating pleasing musical sounds, and by learned Brahmins loudly chanting Vedic hymns. Following in the procession were chariots drawn by beautiful horses with harnesses of golden rope. These chariots were decorated by flags with golden embroidery and by other flags of various sizes and patterns. There were soldiers bedecked with golden armor, servants bearing betel nut, and many well-known and beautiful prostitutes. Many servants followed on foot, bearing an umbrella, whisks, different grades of precious jewels, and other paraphernalia befitting a royal reception. Accompanied in this way, Lord Bharat, his heart softened in ecstasy and his eyes full of tears, approached Lord Ramachandra and fell at his lotus feet with great ecstatic love. After offering the wooden shoes before Lord Ramachandra, Lord Bharat stood with folded hands, his eyes full of tears, and Lord Ramachandra bathed Bharat with tears while embracing him with both arms for a long time. Accompanied by Mother Sita and Lakshman, Lord Ramachandra then offered his respectful obeisances unto the learned Brahmins and the elderly persons in the family, and all the citizens of Ayodhya offered their respectful obeisances unto the Lord. The citizens of Ayodhya, upon seeing their king return after a long absence, offered him flower garlands, waved their upper cloths, and danced in great jubilation. O King, Lord Bharat carried Lord Ramachandra's wooden shoes. Sugriv and Vibhishan carried a whisk and an excellent fan. Hanuman carried a white umbrella. Shatrugna carried a bow and two quivers. And Sita Devi carried a water pot filled with water from holy places. Angada carried a sword. And Jambavan, king of the rikshas, carried a golden shield. O King Parikshit, as the Lord sat on his airplane of flowers, with offering him prayers and reciters chanting about his characteristics, he appeared like the moon with the stars and planets. Thereafter, having been welcomed by his brother Bharat, Lord Ramachandra entered the city of Ayodhya in the midst of a festival. When he entered the palace, he offered obeisances to all the mothers, including Kaikeyi and the other wives of Maharaj Dasharath and especially his own mother, Kaushalya. He also offered obeisances to the spiritual preceptors, such as Vasishta, 
friends of his own age and younger friends worshipped him, and he returned their respectful obeisances, as did Lakshman and Mother Sita. In this way they all entered the palace. Upon seeing their sons, the mothers of Ram and Lakshman, Bharat and Shatrugan, immediately arose, like unconscious bodies returning to consciousness. The mothers placed their sons on their laps and bathed them with tears, thus relieving themselves of the grief of long separation. The family priest or spiritual master, Vasishta, had Lord Ramchandra cleanly shaved, freeing him from his matted locks of hair. Then, with the cooperation of the elderly members of the family, he performed the bathing ceremony, or Abhishek, for Lord Ramchandra with the water of the four seas and with other substances, just as it was performed for King Indra. Lord Ramachandra fully bathed and his head clean-shaven, dressed himself very nicely and was decorated with a garland and ornaments. Thus he shone brightly, surrounded by his brothers and wife, who were similarly dressed and ornamented. Being pleased by the full surrender and submission of Lord Bharat, Lord Ramachandra then accepted the throne of the state. He cared for the citizens exactly like a father, and the citizens, being fully engaged in their occupational duties of Varna and Ashram, accepted him as their father. Lord Ramchandra became king during Treta Yuga, but because of his good government, the age was like Satya Yuga. Everyone was religious and completely happy. O Maharaj Pariksit, best of the Bharat dynasty. During the reign of Lord Ramchandra, the forests, the rivers, the hills and mountains, the states, the seven islands and the seven seas were all favorable in supplying the necessities of life for all living beings. When Lord Ramchandra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, was the king of this world, all bodily and mental suffering, disease, old age, bereavement, lamentation, distress, fear and fatigue were completely absent. There was even no death for those who did not want it. Lord Ramchandra took a vow to accept only one wife and have no connection with any other women. He was a saintly king, and everything in his character was good, untinged by qualities like anger. He taught good behavior for everyone, especially for householders, in terms of Vanashram Dharma. Thus he taught the general public by his personal activities. Mother Sita was very submissive, faithful, shy, and chaste, always understanding the attitude of her husband. Thus, by her character and her love and service, she completely attracted the mind of the Lord. Thus ends the tenth chapter of the ninth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, The Pastimes of the Supreme Lord Ramchandra.